Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Chrono Trigger. This time, we take the fight to the Fiend Lord. This is our treasure. <laughs> Let's play. Well, there you are, Luca. Frog, you're safe. If we leave this room and come back, switching out the party, getting rid of Marl or Luca for Marl. Nadia, the king will be in place there. Forgive me, I was wrong. Please, return to the castle. We see each of these characters' parents, with the exception of Frog serving the queen, as she is who he devoted his life to. If we switch in Robo, we see Luca. Robo, don't waste your energy. As Luca was the one who fixed him and made him who he is now, Robo thinks of Luca as his mother. Continuing the trend of Robo just having the best of everything, that is so sweet in such a clever way of conveying that. I just had to show that. Chrono, so this is where you've been since the fair. You had me worried sick. Still nothing to it. There's a throne at the end of this room. Back in the main lobby, we can go up this way. <laughs> Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> and at the back of this one, a shelter and a mid ether. Also, a sword hanging above this throne. Yet, still no apparent way to move forward. The silence is deafening. Ozzy! <laughs> Welcome, Glenn. Or should I say, Sir Froggy? <laughs> Never expected to see you here. Are those your replacements for Cyrus? Lord Magus is a tad busy right now. You'll have to take up your business with me. After you take it up with the Master Swordsman, Slash, and Flee the Magician, that is. Oh, right. And all 100 beasts in this keep, of course! It's as he says, 100 enemies to take out. Chrono's got a screen nuke, let's take advantage of it. Robo, you got one as well? You'll get just as much opportunity. Any hope of survival? Doesn't seem like it. Oh, there we are. 488 experience, 12 TP, 940G, bubble breath dual tech. I'll take that. And now that everything has been activated and we've seen the true nature of this place, we go back. Do you want our treasure? Okay, but first, play with us, please. Pretty please. I've heard of snot nosed kids, but this is ridiculous. These are shadows, very similar to the enemies fought in the future. Now there actually is a theme with them. How about we try out, oh, uh, we can only target one enemy with this. Okay, maybe not. Bubble Breath is one target. Frog Launcher is all targets. I doubt this is magical though. Could it be shadow? No, it counts as part of robot tackle, okay. Well, it was worth a shot. We'll just use lightning like every other normal boring battle because Chrono has the highest speed and he has a screen nuke, so why would we not? Takes care of them all quite nicely. Four more in. I must say, Chrono's coming into his own as a magic user just because of his high speed and the fact that he's got a screen nuke that's not shadow. We'll get a barrier sphere. First time seeing one of these. This is, reduces magical damage by one third. 
Luca learned a tech a while back called Protect. Uh, I don't know why I pronounced it that way again, as if though you wouldn't know. <laughs> That's how I said it the first time. She learned a tech called Protect. It's like this item, but it reduces physical damage by one third. I just haven't had a good opportunity to use it yet, so I thought I would say that before it got to be too late. Speaking of, speak of the devil. <laughs> I'm only going to disassemble you anyway. I did say the devil. These are sorcerers. See, it's as they say, they are able to heal the party. So why not take them out first? This is our first example of a, oh, I hit the, no, I hit the vampire bat with his crap. Well, okay, he gets to feel important about his life before he goes down. This is our first example of a triple tech. You strike the enemy six, like in, you cut the enemy in six instead of in the quarters. It's an evolution of the extract that we saw before. Take him out. And okay, maybe we can damage you any further. I don't know if it's the sorcerer, I think it is. But one of the enemies here has a hilarious name in the original translation. They're called groupies, and I like to just think that they're the fans of Magus just kinda here to watch and they get caught up in the fighting. It's a really silly name for an enemy and I just love it. We'll attack the underling with the bubble breath. He, I've heard of breathing fire, but breathing robots at them. Nine ten, beautiful. There it is with Robo being such a hard hitter again. Doesn't seem like there's anything else that we can really do. We've already done X Strike. We've already seen Cyclone Sweep. Yeah, I think we're good to just pound on him at this point. Speaking of which, Chrono, you're already in the spirit. I didn't even have to tell you to tell you to do it. Three thirty four, down it goes. Frog got a level up. And moving on, Frog, you're safe. That will not do it all. Okay, let's go a little better this time. So first off, Lightning 2 it is. Chrono would, you know, actually, with Chrono having such high speed, and the fact that the enemies here tend to be rather weak to magic, I think maybe the best way to go about this would be, uh, let's, actually let's do Frog Launcher, would be to give Chrono the silver studs so that his MP usage is halved. That way it's only one MP per battle. Oh. Frog Launcher is a powerful physical attack, as you would expect. It's just Robo hurling something else at the enemy than what he typically hurls. And last up, my own mother. You've been very nice. I think you'll have to die. Another one of these. Lightning two, and I'm ready with the frog launcher. As we're going on, I have to talk about Magus's henchmen, his three generals. I am oblivious. I know, I don't say. So I always thought, I never got that there was a naming theme across the three of them. I always thought of Slash from Guns N' Roses whenever I heard about Slash, but I always just thought Flea was a silly name that was probably a wonky translation, and Ozzy was always just Ozzy to me because I knew about Ozzy before I was even aware that there was a trio of them. Well, yeah, they're what you think they are. They're musical references. They are Slash from Guns N' Roses, Ozzy Osbourne, and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which I know nothing about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This is not Flea, but Flea is what it goes by. He went down a little bit too easily there. That was not Flea. Where is the true one? <laughs> I am here, right here. Been following us all along. Greetings, little green one. Who is this person? She is a powerful magician. Do not lower your guard. Flea is not the mere woman she seems. Yes, yes, I am a man after all, right? <laughs> but its exterior is clearly that of a female. <laughs> man or woman, it's all the same. Power is beauty, and I'm deliciously strong. Poor little froggy. You must be lonely now that Cyrus is gone. And to be turned into something so hideous. How dreadful. But since you've brought your new friends over to play, let me show you all a good time. 
That first enemy that we fought in place of Flea will do MP Buster on you when it's weak. By having Chrono kill it with its counter, it's not able to counter you back. That can be an effective strategy for dealing with that thing. Flea, on the other hand, dealing with the real deal, healing is important, so Frog and Robo are great. We also have access to their triple tech doing nearly a thousand damage per turn. The other thing Flea is capable of is inflicting Confuse. This is downright dangerous, and I would recommend having somebody on healing to do the Panacea. We haven't really seen uh, Confusion that much so far, but the, you just kind of laugh in place, and whenever it comes around to your turn, you go Berserk and attack random targets, including those on your side. Flea's magic defense is very high, so physical damage is the name of the game. Part of the reason why I chose the party that I went with. I don't think we need to triple tech every turn. I think I could do with some healing this turn. So Chrono, go ahead and cleave that heart out. Frog, lick your own wounds. Good. That actually didn't, that did probably about as well as it would have in real life if you tried that. Oh, uh, poison cloud. Frog is now poisoned, the irony. I don't know, well, yes, frogs can be poisonous. I, I am so bad at making frog puns, by the way. I need to apologize for that. I was so awful at it. I guess I, so frogs don't have scales, but it turns out like they didn't, my second pun that I did to replace my first one didn't work either. I guess uh, I'm just not a very good amphibian comedian. That's the best I got, I'm sorry. Robo, go for your heal beam. Robo is now a party healer, which is fantastic. I wish you could restore my MP, but I guess we can't ask for miracles. Frog and Robo, I think you guys got, oh no, actually it'll come around to Chrono's turn again before then. So triple attack it is. Poison Cloud, okay, you can do that. Poisoning Chrono this time, counter attack. Get a crit at that, and another thousand damage should do it. No, oh, no, yes. 500 experience, 10 TP, 1000 G. But, but I'm so beautiful. Lord Magus. Obtain a magic capsule. Wouldn't have it any other way for what your strength was. And we'll use it against Magus in order to stop him. That magic capsule, uh, I'm thinking maybe Frog. He's been out of the party for a while, hasn't gotten capsules on him. We'll do that. As I was saying about Magus's, Mag Magus's generals, <laughs> there I go again. Um, their names in Japanese also have a theme. Their names are Soisa, Mayone, and Binega. Respectively, soy sauce, mayonnaise, and vinegar. This sounds silly and dumb and, well, it kind of is, but what I didn't know until fairly recently is that Akira Toriyama, who presumably named these characters, it's a running theme in his work that he names characters after food items. And with those three having a running theme, it fits with this. If you want another example, it's why Goku's Saiyan name is Kakarot, Ka, Carrot, and why Vegeta is the first half of Vegetable. <laughs> I can't say I didn't face palm at that a little bit the first time that I heard it, but I also had some fun hearing about it and couldn't help but chuckle a little bit. Dance, dance, the god of all fiends is born tonight. Ah, the sacrifice has arrived. All right, well, we got another Jailer and four Lancers. We fought all these enemies before, not too terribly new. I haven't been giving a lot of focus to the enemies because they're pretty much all enemies that we've seen before. It's a museum of sorts, getting to see all of Magus's troops one more time. Lightning two takes care of the room, and it just kind of seems like it's your guys' job to follow up with a strong physical attack if Chrono's magic can't deal with them. Boom! I still say it'd probably be more effective if Robo just threw the dagger at them instead of throwing the person holding the sword, but hey. Chrono learned raise! Oh! I should give him a raise for that one. That is a good, good tech. Eat this misery. Take my life. Or end, oh, end this misery, not eat this misery. Please grant me death. Torment. Even death does not stop your lust to kill one another. Such foolish creatures, you humans. Believe it or not, Chrono just became an effective healer. In exchange for 10 MP, it revives a fallen ally with 300 HP. 
It's six times as good as the Athenian water that I detest so much. Wouldn't have it any other way. I love using Chrono as a healer just for that purpose because he's just so nice. No more worrying about an not coming around to somebody's turn and before they're able to heal themselves from the measly 50 HP you get from the water. That's my biggest complaint with that item, and it's no longer a problem. It's far more easy to defeat Specchio with that once you have rays. Please, help us escape. From this eternal suffering! Hey man, happy to oblige. I have an attack that kills y'all in one hit. It's just what you asked for. How lucky that we ran into each other in a place like this. Oh, whoa, okay. Well, you missed, that's fine. You guys don't even need to be doing techs, honestly. It's a waste of MP, what I've been having you guys do, because it's it's way overkill for the Jailer. Your regular attacks would have done fine enough. 900 damage across the board. Except you, but you're the leader, so I can accept you being a little stronger. Hmm. It seems you freed my undying slaves. Such insolence. It has been ages, Slash. I must admit, I would not even dreamed you would find the courage to come here. Had Cyrus not been with you the last time, your fate would have been the same as all the others. But I'm sure you'd have fit right in with those skeletal servants of mine! Slash is very similar to Chrono. They are both skilled swordsmen, and he even shares some of the same moves. Not that one, however. That one's uh, kind of more of the magical variety. Pretty much, the best advice I can give is don't let the party fall below 100 HP. Oh, four digit damage! It feels so accomplishing and validating seeing that for the first time! There we go, we had a... He's actually not hitting that hard, though, but trust me, he is able to hit very hard, much like Chrono. He's an excellent choice for uh, the Rage Band that we have on Chrono, just because he's going to be doing attacks very frequently and probably hitting the guy in the front. So I like the choice that we have here. Luca could be a good choice for this fight because of her Protect. In fact, I'm actually a little bit sad I didn't use that. Oh well. Uh, yeah. You have some prowess. For the first time in ages, perhaps I'd best employ all of my own as well. And you without Cyrus! You've no hope! Now he's playing for keeps, got his sword and everything. Or he's just gonna go stand in the corner like the bad boy he is. Boo! I remember thinking that Slash looked so cool because I thought he had some kind of helmet that shaded his eyes and you couldn't really see what he actually looked like. And then unfortunately, I looked at his artwork. He looks like a skinny Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball Z with a big shiny head and enormous red lips. <laughs> I. I, I don't care for what he actually looks like. I preferred my interpretation of it, but isn't that how childhood imagination always is? You always kind of prefer how you imagine things to be over what it ends up actually being. Sometimes the best mysteries are best left unsolved. Uh, you can, uh, Robo, heal beam, please. This is what I like about the battle cursor memory. I haven't acknowledged it, but I switched the battle cursor memory and settings to remember everything instead of just attack, tech, or item. And I think that's great. Uh, before, I didn't think it was necessary because we didn't have that many techs and I was kind of just using different ones all the time, so I had to scroll over to them. But now that we're much stronger and have techs for every situation, I often just want to use the same ones on each player's turn anyway. I like it. Uh, we'll go for a robot tackle. Counterattack you. Boom. Okay. Yeah, we have enough for a triple attack. We can do it. Just trying to be efficient, trying to use up players' turns if they're not going to have another one before it comes around. Boom! Yeah! That's why I recommended keeping the party high, because after a while he starts counterattacking. Hit Chrono for 50 right there. Uh, you two can sword stream. Wherever that is, there you are. And Robo, please heal the party. I like you, and I understand your sensitivities. That's why I'm saying please. Boom! Oh, he, okay, he's immune to magic damage. Okay, that's good to know. Didn't actually know that. I think I always just kind of used this party whenever I was dealing with him, so learn something new every day. 
Getting kind of low on MP, so hopefully this time around will be the uh, final time that we have to do our triple attack. 115. It's getting serious. And that's it. 500 experience, 10 TP, 1500 G, Chrono got a level up. Unbelievable. But to fall fighting for Lord Magus, there could be no greater honor. Obtain the Slasher. His sword is a powerful weapon for Chrono, giving him two more speed. He would already have max speed if you use both of the speed capsules up to this point on him. This is cool, just getting to take his weapon and use it to go on through the castle. Slash was originally planned to drop a different weapon known as the Soy Sword, a weapon for Frog, but... You know, it'd be kind of lame to have just gone through all the trouble of getting the Masamune as a symbol of how much you want Frog, and only to just get a stronger weapon for him a few seconds later. I'm glad that they did things the way that they did. I'll go ahead and save, as I should. I think maybe just before I can forget her again, we'll swap Luca into the party. And what's even weirder about the sword that Slash drops is that... The item spot that the Soy Sword was in in the prototype is still in the final game, but it's been changed to the Dark Saber and is a weapon for Chrono. It still goes unused, it has no attributes, just stats that would make sense for Chrono to get at this point in time, and nothing else really special about it. You'd think maybe it'd be a darkness element for Chrono, allowing him to attack with a different element, but it's not even that. And in fact, Frog has many other weapons that ended up on other characters from the prototype, so it's a little bit hard to tell what was intended and what was a placeholder. On top of this, the Slasher made it into the instruction manual for the game and is called the Fleaver. Maybe I'm not so sad I didn't use Luca for that fight after all, if Slash is just immune to magic damage. That's the thing about Luca is that even though she does magic damage very well, she's kind of just locked into She's just kind of locked into doing that, because Protect and Hypno Wave are her only techs that don't do fire damage. Two down, one to go. We've now opened the way to Ozzy. Next time on Chrono Trigger, we go after the third general of the Fiend Lord. See you guys then.